Lisa Miles is going public, hoping her story will help protect others from being victimized by hackers like she was. KTLA's Mary Beth McDade shows us how they did it and how to protect yourself. For Lisa Miles, recently widowed and learning how to live life again on her own, social media has provided a welcome connection. Lisa was on Instagram not too long ago, scrolling like we all do when a pop-up startled her. To unlock the computer, please call support immediately. Please do not attempt to shut down or restart your computer. Doing that may lead to data loss and identity. Lisa death. admits she's not very tech savvy, but before you say this story could never happen to you. I clicked on the message. I had never really done that. I'm not even sure how Instagram really works. I look at pictures. But I clicked on it, and all of a sudden, my computer just started screaming, like binging loud. And you, Microsoft, you must call Microsoft message. right now. You've been Your hacked. Been she couldn't off. close the pop-up, couldn't shut off the computer. And so, with fear swirling that she was being hacked, she called the number. My husband used to protect me, obviously. I was married 35 years, and I've never had anything like this. And because I'm on my own now, I am very, very careful. She says a man claiming to be tech support answered and told her seven hackers were buying child porn from her Wells Fargo account and that she needed to move the money immediately to prevent this from happening. The problem is we need to get that. He said tonight at 7 p.m. The hacker is taking $25,000 out of your bank account to buy this pornography. He then told her he was connecting her to a fraud liaison with Wells Fargo, a second person in the plot. She asked for his employee ID, got his contact information and more, but he was very convincing. He was even able to give her information that she hadn't provided, her bank account numbers, her recent banking activity, even that she had recently used her checking account to buy flowers. He knew it all. All the time, you know, saying just, but please don't worry, but it's very important that we get this money out tonight because that transaction of your porn that you just bought will go through and, you know, you'll be arrested type thing. This scare tactic worked. She followed his instructions to a T. She went to two different Wells Fargo branches in the Valley to withdraw $25,000. Then to this Canoga Park smoke shop where she deposited the money into a Bitcoin machine. All the while he was on the phone with her, assuring her all her money would reappear in her account the next day. Of course, that never happened. And it wasn't until Lisa got home that reality hit that she had just been scammed out of all the money in her checking account. I just cried. It, it, was so, it was so violating. It's so wrong. It's so mean. We went back to the smoke shop to inquire about the machine, which was no longer there. They just uh, lease the space and that's it. That's all I know. LAPD's Lieutenant Michael McComas isn't surprised to hear that hackers directed her to a Bitcoin machine, which are everywhere these days. Smoke shops, pharmacies, gas stations, you name it. Legit machines being used by the scammers. He most likely had her take the money to the Bitcoin machine. He most likely gave her a blockchain address and then she deposited that money toward to that address. And once that happens, it's gone. McComas tells us, unfortunately, scams like this are hard to solve. Bottom line, never trust a pop-up message. It's never legitimate. Banks, the government, nobody's going to reach out to you through a pop-up message. Lou Rabon of Cyber Defense Group says scare tactics are one of the main ways hackers con you. They're just trying to pressure using time so the person doesn't have time to think and really evaluate what's going on. He thinks they got into Lisa's computer and obtained her banking info via some sort of malicious program that was accidentally installed. As for Lisa, she has now changed all her banking info and passcodes, but still, she can't believe she fell victim to such nefarious scammers. This happens to people, it changes their entire life. It's so horrible. 
The police and cyber experts recommend not only reporting a crime such as this to your local police department, but also to the FBI. They have an Internet Crime Complaint Center, and you can find a link on our website, ktla.com.